I'm going to try and explain how an earth loop system works um, for the scientists among you and for the people that are, are know about this you'll know that some of the terminology and, and some of the explanations have been simplified just to make it nice and easy um, so I know it's not entirely accurate but it, it's good enough to give people an idea of exactly what's going on the drawing we're looking at is just a diagram of a TNS system when we talk about earthing systems, the T would always stand for Earth. N, in this case, is neutral. And S means that the neutral and the Earth are entirely separate throughout the whole of the installation. In other words, they're separate from the supply transformer right through to the final circuit. Our system really begins with our supply transformer, which you'll find at the end of most rows or sometimes they're up in uh, on a pole somewhere it supplies a voltage to us at between two phases of 400 volts or for us in particular for this uh, drawing or, or explanation we're looking at 230 volts a single phase is 230 volts so when we plug a piece of equipment in to a socket the current will flow from our transformer at a pressure of 230 volts and remember that when we talk about voltage we're talking about pressure the amount of current that flows in the cable is obviously down to the resistance of the cable and the amount of pressure it's under and for current to flow between two points we have to have a difference in pressure just the same as we'd have to have a difference in pressure for water to flow through a pipe so our current starts off at a pressure of 230 volts, flows into the building through this part of the system. This would be possibly our underground cable. Then goes into a service head or a service fuse. Through the service fuse to a main switch, and there are the two contacts for our main switch. Past the main switch, we've got a consumer unit which will have a selection of protective devices in. Now, if I connect a piece of equipment to the final circuit, the current will flow through the protective device, through the final circuit, which possibly I've wired, through our piece of equipment, and through to the star point of our transformer, which is generally around zero volts. We know that our neutral can't be exactly at zero volts because if it was no current would flow in it but for the sake of of making things easy we call it zero volts for reasons of safety the star point is connected to earth by the uh, by a big earth rod because we know that our earth is generally at zero volts sometimes it's a bit higher but for the sake of the explanation we'll say our earth is at zero volts so in a good circuit, our current's going to flow through the system and everything is going to work really, really well. We haven't got a problem, okay? So as I said before, this is a TNS system and the earth is completely separate throughout the whole of the system, okay? The earthing system is there to protect us if there's a problem and we have a fault. So let's say that our circuit is supplying a, a three kilowatt load and if we do the calculations we would know that a three kilowatt load is going to have a resistance of 17.69 ohms if we just 230 divided by 13 amps. If it's protected by uh, let's say a 20 amp type B circuit breaker we need to make sure of course that the circuit breaker is going to remain functional all the time the circuit is working which is is going to because obviously we've only got 13 amps flowing through the system and our circuit breaker is capable of of withstanding 20 amps for quite a considerable period of time um, circuit breakers are a different issue we don't want to talk too much about those but let's just assume there's a fault on our piece of equipment here and the metal case of the equipment cuts through the line conductor of the supply cable 
So if the case of our piece of equipment cuts through the line conductor, fairly obviously the case is going to become live. Now, if there was no earthing system, it could happen that I would be touching something indoors. It could be a, a gas pipe or a water pipe that's in contact with earth outside. And the water pipe is going to be at zero volts. If I touch the case of whatever the piece of equipment is, current could pass across my chest and flow to earth because that's a nice, easy path for it to flow. And I know that if I get a current across my chest, the likelihood is it's going to kill me. So I need to have something in place to prevent that from happening. That's why we have an earthing system. It's important that my earthing system has enough, a low enough resistance so that enough current can flow to operate this protective device. Now you can see that in the event of a fault, the current's going to flow through the case of the machine to wherever our earth is connected to, then through our earthing system back to the star point of the transformer and it forms what we call an earth fault loop. In other words, for us as electricians, we'd call that our ZS. And we need to know that the value of that ZS is low enough to operate that protective device. Now, a 20 amp type B protective device, and in fact any type B protective device, requires a maximum of five times its current rating to operate it, and it must operate within 0.1 of a second. That's the way the product standard says they have to be made. So if I've got a 20 amp device, 520s, it means that 100 amps will have to flow through this system before that device will operate. Now fairly obviously for 100 amps to flow, I need to have a reasonably low resistance. The easiest way to do the calculation really to find out what the maximum resistance would be is to divide our voltage, which is 230, by 100 and we will end up with a resistance of 2.3. Now 2.3 would be the maximum resistance of this loop and that would take into account any temperature rises and everything else. So that would be the maximum, okay? We must always bear in mind that if we're measuring a cable when it's cold, the temperature of that cable is going to increase and if the temperature of the cable increases, so will the resistance. So there are calculations we need to do to make sure we get it right, but of course this is really just to explain what the earth loop path is. So we need to make sure that our earth loop path for this particular device at when our cable is operating at 70 degrees is 2.3 ohms maximum. As I said, any type B protective device has to operate within 0.1 of a second, a maximum of five times its rating. We're using a 20 amp device, so if we multiply that by five, it means that when 100 amps flows through it, it must operate within 0.1 of a second. Now, clearly for 100 amps to flow, if I just use Ohm's law, 230, which is my voltage, divided by 100, tells me that I've got a value of resistance of a maximum of 2.3. Now, the problem I've got is in my system, my conductor temperatures are unknown to me when I do a test. So when I'm installing the cable, it's easy to calculate, but when I do the test, I've no idea what the temperature is. So I can use a system which is called the rule of thumb. When we do the rule of thumb, we're really just taking a, a rough gauge of whether or not the system will be able to operate correctly in the given temperatures, which we don't know. We know that the maximum it can operate at, or maximum temperatures our cable can run at, are 70 degrees, but we've no idea the temperature of those cables when we're measuring them, when we measure the resistance. For our purposes, if we multiply the maximum value from BS7671, which for a 20 amp type B device is 2.3 ohms, by 0.8, we end up with a value of 1.84. Our measured value 
must not be greater than that rule of thumb value. So our, our earthing system is made up of, of really three components. Um, we've got ZE, the E would be for external, Z is for AC resistance, if you like, or impedance. So the resistance of our supply earth and supply line would form our ZE. So if we wanted to measure ZE, we would just measure from our disconnected earth at the earth terminal, the main earth terminal, round to our incoming line on our main switch. That would give us ZE. But it's important at that point to disconnect the earth. But you can see how to do that test in the other videos. The next component would be R1 and R2. R1 is the resistance of our line conductor. R2 is the resistance of our earth conductor. ZE plus R1 and R2 will add up for us to ZS. So that would be the complete system resistance through our earth, through the whole of the earthing system, back through the line conductor, back to our test instruments, which of course would be an earth fault loop impedance tester.